Good day and welcome to the Q2 FY25 earnings conference call of Ashoka Building Limited, hosted by Nirmal Bang Equities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Jyoti Gupta from Nirmal Bang Equities. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Mukhtar. Hello, everyone. On behalf of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities, I welcome you all to the Ashoka Bilcon Limited Quarter 2 FY25 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us Mr. Satish Parikh, Managing Director, and Mr. Paresh Mehta, Chief Financial Officer. Without further ado, I request Mr. Satish Parikh, sir, to start with his opening comment, after which we can open the floor for question and answers. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Jyoti. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone had a great Diwali festival and all are doing well. On behalf of Ashoka Bilcon Limited, I extend a warm welcome to everyone joining us today to discuss our business and financial results for quarter and half year ended 30th September 2024. On this call, we are joined by our CFO, Mr. Paresh Mehta, and SGA, our Investor Relation Advisor. Let me begin by giving an industry overview. India is experiencing a massive boost in road infrastructure investment, bringing a major shift in connectivity and economic growth. To support rapid growth and improve transport network, the National Highway Authority of India, NHI, NHAI, has launched ambitious road development projects, and these actions aim to cut travel times, improve fit improvements, and build a strong road system for the future of India. Through National Monetization Plan, NHI has attracted substantial investment from both local and global sources using creative financing approaches. This includes focusing on toll operate and transfer projects and infrastructure investment trusts, which have helped scale up road development efforts like never before. Road investment in India has sped up significantly in recent years. NHI has awarded 16 TOT bundles, raising about INR 49,000 crore, and has also raised around 25,900 crore through its INVIT under the NM, N, NMP. A key factor driving this growth is the strong increase in toll revenue, boosted by development like fast tag regular toll rate adjustments for the inflation and overall economic growth. Over the past five years, total toll collection has grown by 2.6 times, reaching around 65,000 crores in FY24. These measures have supported higher passenger and freight traffic, significantly increasing the revenue for the country. Coming to the company, Ashoka Concessions Limited, subsidiary of the company, has entered into share purchase agreement with Indian Highways Concessions Trust inter alia for development, for divestment of its five subsidiaries. The aggregate enterprise value of the transaction is INR 5,718 crores, subject to adjustment of cash and debt, translating into an equity value of INR 2,539 crores. The company has entered into SPA to acquire 34% of equity of ACL, along with 70. 77,41,250 Class A CCDs and 2 crores Class B CCDs from Macquarie SBI Infrastructures Investment Private Limited and SBI Macquarie Infrastructure Trust for Rs. 1,526 crores. The company 
along with its subsidiary, Viva Highways Limited and ACN has entered into an agreement with investors for the following transaction, which shall be subject to completion of sale of certain project assets of ACN. The company and thereby providing an exit to the investors from ACL. Post acquisition of ACL securities held by investors, ACL would become wholly owned subsidiary of the company with effect from the date of acquisition of ACL securities. Viva Hybrid Limited, a subsidiary of the company to acquire investments of investors, rupees totaling 7 crores 46 lakhs 20,000 equity shares comprising of 26% equity share held in Jawara Niger Toll Road Company at an aggregate consideration of rupees 150 crores. Monetization of land. Land owned by Viva Hybrid Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary under its real estate portfolio situated at Hinjavadi Pune has been monetized for a total consideration of 453 crores. Now on the project fund, let me give an update. The company has received completion certificate for its HAM projects for lending of NH161 from Kandi to Ramsan Pale in the state of Telangana. From August 2024, the project is executed by Ashoka Kandi Rana Ramsan Pale Road Private Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of the company. The SPV has received a certificate for completion of entire project stretch of 39.98 kilometers. Consequent to this, the SPV will receive NUD for the entire stretch of 39.98 kilometers. The company has received three LOAs from Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority, that is MMRDA, in October 2024, aggregating to 1737.86 crores. Companies also received LOI from SIDCO for EPC project, received for an integrated infrastructure development under NINA project for a value of 1673.24 crores. This is in JB, where the company is the lead member with 51% stake. The company received a letter of acceptance from Maharashtra State Road Development Corporation, that is MSRDCM, in October 2024 for an aggregate value of rupees 2309.99 crores. Companies also received LOA for the BMC project of construction of flyover at T junction on San Panuel Highway with project value of 1126.58 crores in QZ of GST. Company received the provisional completion certificate from NHI project where the company has informed that September 15, 2024 as the commercial operation date for a stretch of 39.07 kilometers. As per letter issued by independent engineer for its hand project of NHI on hybrid NOD mode under Bharat Mala Pariyojana. The project is executed by Ashoka Basantpur. Singodi Road Private Limited and wholly owned subsidiary of the company. The SPV has received a provisional completion certificate of 39.07 kilometers out of total stretch of 40.6 kilometers. Upon the declaration of COD, the SPV is eligible for receipt of annuity from NHI for the operation period of 15 years at an interval of every six months from September 15, 2024. In addition to this, Ashoka Bilcon Limited is also declared as lowest bidder L1 for MECTCL project on 1st November 2024. It's a domestic project for establishment of 400 public 220 KVA substation EPC work at Nangao. Amravati. The project 
bid price is 312.13 crores including gst coming to the order book status as on 30th september 2024 our balance order book stands at inr 11104 crores this excludes additional orders received from project post september 24 worth rupees 4320 crores and also excludes l1 of 265 crores the total or current order book standard 515424 crores the break up as on september 30th is road and railway project compromise around 6582 crores which is 59.3% of the total order book among the road project order book half projects are to the tune of rupees 844 crores and epc road projects are worth 5185 crores and railway is around 844 crores power tnd accounts to rupees 3939 crores which is approximately 35.5% of the total order book the total epc building segment is 583 crores which is 5% of the total order book to conclude let me say this again that our primary focus remains on maintaining a sustainable epc business in segments comprising of highways railways power transmission distribution and buildings this is all from my side i would now request mr parish mehta to present the financial performance thank you thank you sir <clears throat> good afternoon everyone starting with the stand alone numbers for q2 and h1 fy25 the total income of q2 fy25 stood at 1459 inr crores as compared to inr 1590 crores in q2 fy24 with a drop of approximately 8% ebitda for the quarter stood at inr 160 crores with an ebitda margin of 11% finance cost during the quarter has increased by 18 crores on a y to y basis due to increase in long term borrowings this is largely on account of increase in working capital cycle of power orders and constitutes interest paid to 100% subsidy of 100% subsidies where the funds have been borrowed from the 100% subsidies batch stood at inr 36 crores for the quarter for h1 25 the total income stood at inr 3295 crores as compared to inr 3093 crores a growth of 7% ebitda for the period stood at inr 305 crores a growth of 14% with ebitda margins improving by 60 basis points to 9.1%. <clears throat> the reported PPT grew by 4% to INR 121 crores and PAT is INR 77 crores. Our revenue contribution for each segment for Q2 FY25 is as follows. Road EPC and road hand contributed 49%, power EPC contributed 28%, Railway stood at 12%, and other segments like building, EPC, and others contribute to 11%. Coming to the consolidated results, the total income for Q2 FY25 stood at INR 2,489 crores as compared to 2,154 crores in Q2 FY24, registering a growth of 16%. Ebitda for the quarter stood at 945 crores, a growth of 61% by and by. Bad grew by 334 percent by by to INR 463 crores. For H1 FY25, total income stood at 4,954 crores as compared to 4,090 crores as on Q2 FY24, registering a growth of 21 percent. A bit of for the quarter stood at INR 1,573 crores, a growth of 43 percent year on year. Bad stood at rupees 620 crores. growth of 269% total consolidated rate as on 30th september 2024 stood at inr 6881 crores the stand alone debt is at inr 1317 crores which comprises of inr 109 crores of equipment and term loans 
and INR 1209 crores for working capital loans. In Q2 FY25, in our BOT division, the company recorded a gross total collection of INR 316 crores as against INR 297 crores in Q2 FY24, recording a growth of 6%. With this, we now open the floor for question and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, so my first question is that uh, in the first half, we have grown by 7%. But if I see your debt, it has gone up to 2200 crores, including from subsidiaries. So it's a jump of almost 950 crores. So, and even the working capital seems to be very weak uh, in the first half. So what is happening on this front? Our working capital has substantially increased. Debt has gone up significantly. So so how do we look? Uh, so what are the key reasons for this? And how do we look uh, for these numbers in the coming quarters? So uh, this uh, is typically as uh, uh, one of the pointers we have given is that uh, working capital on the power sector, which we had won a lot of contracts in uh, 23, uh, have uh, uh, been executed largely in this two years, one and a half year, uh, wherein uh, the working capital cycle in the power sector is uh, longer, elongated. That is the reason uh, these uh, uh, working capital cycle has increased, which has been typically funded both by uh, Loans from subsidiaries as well as uh, loan from uh, the work capital lenders. So what we expect is by uh, these projects will come to an end by uh, uh, March to June uh, next year, and where we will we'll see this numbers going down by three to four hundred crores at least. No, sir. I'm, I'm just talking about this quarter. So even if I look from March to September, the debt is up by 800 crores. So in six months, what has gone up? Because either one thing is that your margins are not coming, so you are supporting the projects, and since the cash flow is a shortfall, so you are supplementing it with increased debt. And that means that this debt will eventually become very sticky and it will not reduce. So this 2200 crores stays on your balance sheet, and you will look forward to only reduce it from the cash flows from the monetization proceeds. So, uh, because this is only six months, I'm mean, not talking about even YOY, six months is 800, YOY, and 12 months, it's almost 950 crores. So, there's not much of a difference. So, this ballooning of debt has happened only in the last six months. Yeah, so basically, as I said, uh, there is a large uh, requirement of uh, working capital in the power and uh, power sector, and certain receivables in the uh, road sector where. That the projects are coming to an end, and there are certain receivables which will be received when, as, as soon as the project is uh, handed over totally, because these are projects coming to an end. So uh, we will see the change. Uh, no doubt, uh, there is uh, a, a ramp up in uh, this quarter. But if you also see, uh, as of 30th June, there was a large cash balance uh, which was used for working capital. So if the cash balance would not have been there and what would have been used for reducing the debt, then this difference should not be that much. If you see, uh, as of 30th June, there is almost a cash balance of 357 crores, which are receivers received at the end of the day, uh, uh, quarter, 30th June. So effective increase in uh, 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 working capital debt uh, between 30th June and 30th September is uh, to be adjusted for almost 300 crores of uh, 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 cash lying in the books as of 30th June. 
Okay, so I'll just okay. I'll take it off right now. I'm still not able to understand this, so I'll take it off right now. Okay. Because the numbers are somehow not matching. So the second question is on the margins. I think in Q3, F4, Q4, FI20, uh, you had said that, uh, FI23, you had said that the margin pain will continue for two weeks, two more quarters or two, three quarters. And then every quarter that uh, deadline has been shifting by two, three quarters. The only thing which has remained constant is that shifting of quarters by two, three, and we have already behind scheduled by almost, I think, three, four quarters. And we're still not able to reach double digit margin. So, my question is that why don't we do cost of completion accounting and take the write off on all these projects and move to normalized margin? Uh, because this pain, the guidance is not being met and every time we're missing it. So so when do we get to that double digit number is a big question now because again, last quarter we said two, three quarters. So now do you think that in Q3 or Q4 we'll be back to double digit margins? No, I don't think so. We'll be back on double digit margin. It's not due to that uh, um, we can uh, change the margin. Margins are what have been settled for the past two, three years for these projects. Um, and these projects are coming to an end. Uh, the new projects, wherever they will, uh, they will take off with, by uh, probably February or March. The new projects which have been coming, uh, which have already come in, which are better margins. So the double digit numbers would be seen only uh, in uh, Q1, Q2, FY26. So basically, from the original deadline, it's almost move ahead by almost a year. So we expect it now Q2, FY26 that we will start hitting double digit margins. Okay, just the last question, so what was the total order inflow for I think, the financial uh, year to date in 25? So, um, around 6,000 crores. The guidance for the full year, so if you can give some color on full year guidance and how's the bid pipeline looking, so that's my last question. So, bid pipeline is there around 1 lakh crore. Bidding is there from NHI out of which 65,000 will be participating. There are bids to be opened of around 9,000 crores, which we already bid. And bid opening is yet balance. And uh, we hope we should pick up around four to 5,000 crores in balance part of the year. Okay, sure, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICIC Securities, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my first question is, sir, are we still maintaining our guidance of 10% growth in revenues for the entire fiscal, F25, and a bit of 9.5%, or do you think that a bit will miss the bit of guidance? So on the, on the execution side, uh, keeping in view the uh, orders which have come in and uh, their expected date of start of activities, I we believe that uh, the... Uh, 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 revenue top line uh, may be flattish uh, for this year. So, uh, uh, what uh, we have said, uh, thought in the last quarter. Um, as far as the bid is concerned, we expect at least it should uh, improve by half a percent for the next two quarters. To the half a percent. What is half a percent? Nine, nine, nine percent is nice. Nine percent for the two, two, two next Eight and a half. Percent. Sorry. Eight and a half. The yeah. number which is achieved in the Q2. Same number. And then Q, then Q4. Uh, when, when we start our uh, new orders, in that time the revenues will then start looking into that 10 plus one, 10 plus numbers. So given the fact that we, you know, we have been uh, doing uh, below 10 percent for a very long time, what makes you confident of getting into double digit? Uh, were the was the project which you won earlier? Was the fixed price contract? What what what, what is different about the new orders? Yeah, as we have uh, 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 explained in the last few couple of quarters, the margins have been uh, lower on the, the projects which we have won in the last two and a half, three years um, uh, post-COVID. Uh, so it is that intrinsic part of it. These orders now being uh, um, coming to an end will change, and we now continue to bid at uh, double-digit margins. So... Um, these are for orders which were taken in the past and the impact of, uh, as they were fixed price contracts, the impact of uh, uh, inflation uh, or increase in prices have had an impact on the margins in the old orders. The last question on the Jara, Jara Nagao and Chennai are, are you looking to 
salaries as to an IF where we are right now is the earlier argument than the word so as far as nf uh, sp was concerned it had a it had a long stop date which has expired quite some time back so presently it is not on uh, the sp is not live but uh, we uh, continue to engage we uh, as far as chennai order concerned we could consolidate our stakes and um, we are in the process of uh, uh, structuring the debt on that and then uh, take it to the uh, in, uh, market for sale um, as far as jtc is concerned we are still awaiting uh, permission from uh, the state government msr dc for uh, transfer of 26% of shares and uh, in that meanwhile we will also try to consolidate the balance 26% which is being held by macquery understood understood thank you thank you thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question the next question is from the line of hari kumar an individual investor please go ahead yeah am i audible madam yes sir yeah my question is this regarding 35% stake uh, by for 50 member crores and the total sale consideration we are getting is uh, 2500 crores am i right sir yeah for the bot projects correct yeah. so, so for 60% we are getting only 1000 crores or i am wrong on my assumption sir so these uh, sale of assets are presently only of the five bot projects which sp has been signed we also have other assets in acl which uh, will represent the balance uh, 66% also so uh, uh, having acquired 34% from sbi macquery both that all the other assets will be part of 100% ownership of abl so uh, we have ham projects uh, seven ham projects under acl plus uh, certain shares of chavra nagao which also uh, are is a has a is of value to be available to abl for monetizing uh, okay sir and my second question sir this uh, land sale by our subsidiary has been recorded in this uh, september quarter account sir or is not it included in the books it has been recorded uh, and it has it is reflected in the consol numbers because this land sale was held by the 100% subsidiary of ashoka bilcon eva ml limited and uh, mm-hmm. that's the reason you we see the uh, consol numbers quite robust okay it's not shown as other income it has been shown as regular income yeah it because uh, uh, land purchase sale is part of vhl's uh, business so it is shown as of uh, regular revenue okay sir my last question sir regarding the end of the year can you give estimate of the consolidated debt profile because of the sale how much are we going to end up uh, estimate please sir so uh, by the end of this quarter uh, by the end of this year uh, we probably Uh, this 6,800 uh, will be reduced by debt, which is already on the five beauty projects of 2,400. If that deal happens, that will go down. Certain debt on the ham projects also will go down, uh, which we intend to sell. So today, difficult to estimate what exactly, but uh, we expect that at least three, uh, three and a half thousand of crores of debt definitely will go down uh, before before March, and then balance will happen in post March. Okay, thank you, Lord Sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Vishal Pariwal from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. So your voice is not audible properly. Yeah, is this better now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, so, so uh, on the margins front, just a clarification. So, you mentioned uh, the the second half margin will be fifty uh, basis point higher than what we have done in the first half. Is that correct? Expect to do that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. So, so I mean, like you know, first half is almost like seven and a half percent to I mean, like touching like eight percent in in the second half. That's uh, what we could see. Okay. And then second uh, on this uh, uh, transaction that we have done, so ham asset is not part of it. So, so, so any any color that you can provide, like you know, any anything that is happening on that front. 
So uh, um, we are, as we have stated in the past, and we uh, we are uh, we are we are in constant engaging, and we expect that uh, in the next couple of weeks we should be able to uh, sign on the SPA uh, for the ham projects also. Okay, so which means basically, uh, I mean, probably in this quarter itself, I mean, uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. This is quarter. Okay. And then uh, uh, earlier, this uh, couple of the BOT asset that we have done, so there were impairments that was taken. So, uh, uh, I mean, like, you know, can, can you highlight, like, you know, will this lead to a right back or anything of that front in, in the coming quarter or anything that you can share that? So, uh, uh, <clears throat> there will be uh, uh, impairment uh, at ACL level, which will be reversed once these assets are sold off. Which is almost at ACL balance sheet of almost 800 crores, and uh, at APL balance sheet there could be a reversal of approximately 250 to 300 crores. Post thing. Hello. Participants left the queue. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Jyoti Gupta from Nirmal Bang Equity. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, as I heard correctly, you said that uh, the current order book would be executed in the next, uh, let's say, three quarters, and then you would be bidding in for for projects which will give you double-digit margin. What projects would that be, sir? No, no. What we have clarified is uh, that the new projects which we have won, mm. uh, they, uh, the execution of them uh, will largely start somewhere in the last month of uh, FY25. Okay. And then it will be full swing in FY25-26, wherein then we will be in a position to uh, book a double digit margin. Okay. All right. So, what is the current? How do we see uh, this quarter? I mean, we see that uh, the, the second quarter was impacted because of several reasons. How do we? See, how should we see third quarter now? How has the execution picked up pace? And um, uh, fourth quarter, you are more positive. So, are there green shoots here? So we, as we said, keep probably we uh, we will end up this uh, year 25 in a uh, flattish uh, sense, so uh, we'll have a marginal uh, growth in the revenue based on the existing order book, which is getting over over period of time. So uh, overall, uh, uh, we will do the similar turnover which we did uh, in last year, uh, last half year. It's two. Okay, and what would be the outlook for FY26, sir? FY26, based on this order book. And maybe next order book, we should definitely look at uh, uh, to, uh, after getting uh, new orders uh, to go by 10 to 15 percent. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kanwal from HDSC Securities. Please go mm -hmm. ahead. So this uh, land sale is reflecting in which non item in the consolidated? In uh, revenue only, uh, I just tell you. Uh, revenue only, uh, uh, revenue from operations. So, so how much is 400, how much 430, how much is that? Uh, 452. And you have received the payments, all the payments also against this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so what is this arrangement with the subsidiary, the land debt which has gone up from the subsidiary, if I do the math from presentation data, the balance sheet debt, there's a difference. So what, what is that arrangement with the subsidiary? Uh, did for us, what, uh, regarding what? So this 950 crores difference between the presentation debt of 1317 and the balance sheet debt of 22,250 crores, there's a difference of 950. So which has increased over the years, this number has been increasing, the difference between the two. So what is that? It's 950 crores is loans issued from uh, the subsidies. This is for working capital. Which has been used for working capital. 
So instead of banks, we're borrowing it from subsidiary, this 950 okay. crores. 100% subsidiary, like whatever land was monetized, this 430 yeah. crores, most of it was upstream to ABL for uh, ABL's uh, operations. So now do you think this is the peak that, or, uh, I mean, or with now the growth improving, this is working capital debt of 2000 to 50, including the 950 crore subsidiary debt. So this will keep ballooning from here also as the growth picks up, or this is a peak debt now? Um, from a turnover perspective, it's a peak debt, but from perspective of um, uh, realization of monetization money and a mix of uh, new ham projects and BOT projects coming up, we really cannot immediately say what how it will peak out. But I think we should be uh, close to a peak. But what could be the non-recurring part in this? I mean, because we were under assumption that once you do the BOT deal or anti there will be some relief of cash, and which is not ready. Agreed. Huh? It's not there will not be. But this will happen maybe next year, uh, uh, 25, 26. So this will rest at these levels. This 2200 crores will keep sitting now for some quarters before it starts reducing. Yeah, by Q4 or Q5, sorry, Q126, it will start reducing. So without the repayment, I mean, without, I mean, repayment from the monetization proceed, so on an absolute basis, as the uh, margins come back and we generate operating cash flows, is this number will start reducing. Yeah, definitely. But increasing from here on, you don't see a significant headroom for this to grow from here now. Don't expect because they are um, almost. Uh, Substantial uh, uh, working capital has been provided for the projects, and been, the projects will now be uh, throwing back the uh, realization of debtors and other uh, WIP, which will then uh, rationalize the working capital. So, what's the impact of delayed connections uh, from the clients which would have impacted or elevated this working capital? Because some of the companies have seen that during this quarter there has been delays from release from the government agencies. Manastra has been into elections. So, will you attribute a part of this increase also to that, or this is the normal business cost increase in the debt? Uh, largely based on the working capital cycle. Of course, partly also on this slight, slight delays in payment being released due to various non administrative reasons. But the uh, working capital cycle typically plays that way. So, power projects which have been, uh, which require initial. Uh, capital for procurement of material and other things, they take up uh, uh, a lot of uh, working capital requirement because on the purchase side, uh, there's a lot of competition of buying, so you need to pay the vendors. But so when I look at the cash flows on the standalone side, the, actually the increase is coming because of the trade table is going down, so not yeah, because yeah. of... We have used that money for reducing the paid trade papers more, but uh, correspondingly relation has been slower at the, from the client side. But trade tables for what? Like, is, have you, what kind of trade tables have... Regular suppliers and vendors for my power and road projects. Okay, so you've given them advances for securing the equipment. If you see that trade papers have gone into WIP and debtors. Yeah. For uh, purchase of... Uh, Materials for my power projects. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vasudev from Nuama Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so, sir, after we've acquired this 34 percent from SPM and acquired it for 1526 crores, will there still be anything remaining to be paid after that? And when do we expect this acquisition to get completed? So, uh, uh, and as far as ACL is concerned, uh, after payment of 1526, uh, uh, Shuka will become the 100 percent owner of ACL. We expect this transaction, uh, the long stop date for the other transaction is June 25, and we expect to get that done somewhere in the month of March, April, uh, May 25. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, and sir, for the Jawara Naiga on the Chennai over are any tentative timelines when we might again uh, start to look for monetization of these projects? 
believe this will happen somewhere in 25-26. We presently focus on the BOT and HAM project, which we are already uh, signing on. Okay, okay, sir. And uh, sir, if you can help me with the total equity requirements for the HAM project, uh, how much has we already infused, and now how much do we plan for FY25-26? So the balance uh, equity for our current HAM projects uh, is approximately 100 crores. Okay, and uh, now how much of this will be infused in H2 then? This will be totally uh, be uh, uh, infused before March. Okay. And uh, lastly, sir, what is the capex that we did in H1 and how much are we planning for the second half? So in H1, we did a uh, capex of approximately 33 crores. And uh, in FY2, we may probably do another 35 to 40 crores. H1, H2, sorry, not H2. Okay. Sure, so that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Mundra from Mind Temple Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, what was the book value of the land that we sold in this quarter? So, uh, uh, approximately 65 odds. Sorry, I think. Sorry, I missed the number, sir. How much was it? Approximately 65 crores. 65 crores? Yeah. So, again, 65 crores, we've recorded a revenue of 435 crores, correct? Yeah, plus other expenses, net, we have recorded a profit of 370 crores. 370 crores, all right. And, sir, after this monetization, what is the land bank that we have remaining, the book value of the land bank that we have? So, we would have approximately 210 crores of land bank uh, with our uh, subsidiaries. Uh, which will be uh, available for say, uh, and which could have maybe a value three to four times at least. These are land banks on the average hold of six, six to seven years. Okay. All right. All right. So, sir, in spite of these 435 crores flowing in this quarter, uh, the, the control debt has not diminished, and uh, the is that understanding correct? Once these power projects are over and, and they're, yeah. they're big, I mean, that stage is over, that should again mobilize and start running. Largely, this amount has been utilized for payment of um, the payables of our power and EPS projects. Got it, got it. Uh, and so, what was I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, your voice is speaking, sir. Uh, is this better? Hello? Yeah, now it's better. Yeah, so, so, what is the total equity plus loss funding that we've done for the five BOT projects that we're going to monetize? Uh, approximately 2,300. 2,300. Again, that we're getting about uh, 2,500, right? 2,500, right. 2,600 crores. Right. And uh, 15, some 1500 odd crores is what you're going to pay to SBM Macquarie, which right. is already provided for in the book. Right. Perfect. And uh, sir, what was the, I mean, if you have that number handy, uh, these five BOT projects would have contributed to how much fat for FY 23 and 24? Mm, I would not have it offhand. But were they profit making? But uh, were they making profit? So, EBITDA definitely will be positive, and uh, most of the projects would be in uh, uh, plus also. Maybe you can take it offline, and I could give you that data. Got it, got it, sir. And so, this land parcel that we sold is this has this been sold to some related party? No, no, it has been sold. We have declared that it has been sold to Microsoft uh, India. Okay, okay. Oh. Uh, that is from mine. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Is there no further questions from the participants? I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, um, uh, I hope we have been able to answer most of your queries. Uh, we look forward to your participating in the next quarter um, uh, call.
for any for, for any further queries, you may get in touch with SGA, our in, uh, investor relation advisors, or ourselves. Uh, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. On behalf of Nirmal Bank Equities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.